Hey everybody, it's me, Enrico, back with another art tutorial build. Right, and today we are going to be building... Go ahead and see. Uh, I think we can pretty much use everything we've got. Alright, let's go ahead and get on location. See, this is my lovely base here. This is my home, my home on Ragnarok. Now, I do play on the Atricia cluster. Atricia is a 50x server. There, it's a great cluster to be a part of. They have a Discord oh, community center on all maps. They have wonderful admins and moderators. They're just a lovely, lovely group of people. If you're they're getting more for PvE, I would say, because uh, the servers I play on are PvE. So it's definitely geared more towards um, just having fun, building, enjoying the game without getting griefed. Right? And if you ever come over to Atricia, to the Ragnarok servers, and you look at the plateau by the desert, as you can see, uh, if you play Ark, then you know. It's right there is the, uh, the desert, the river. And the huge plateau that's right beside it is home to my base. I definitely would not suggest flying in fast. Because it does take a little bit to load because my base is kind of a larger base. Now if you caught the last arc stream, of course, you saw the building of the Star Wars inspired lighthouse. Like a time lapse watching it come in. Uh, it's a lighthouse inspired by Star Wars. Eventually there will be a space dock right there, Star Wars themed. But today, we're going to be building my military inspired single... It's really good for a single person, possibly up to two people. Uh, it's a military style mobile. I say mobile because it's built on, built on a boat. So we're going to go ahead and start heading over to that location. There we go. Got to slow down a little bit. <laughs> now the lighthouse was the last arc stream. But the stream right before that we built this little number right here. This is the night flyer. Or it's a my version of the Night Flyer is that this is actually called the Blue Tsunami. Uh, it's named by one of my wonderful community, uh, Adaptable. Great person. She named it, or they named it, sorry. And of course, this is also for a solo player. It's an entire base. You got Kim Bench, Fabricator, the Forge. You got that. You got your gen generator, more storage. Of course, you've got cryo fridges, mannequins. Now, you can put mannequins all down this wall. And, of course, you got beds here. And then if you want to decorate, you can actually decorate this up to make it look like a cockpit. It's got a roof hatch here. You're getting in and out of the boat from the top. And then, of course, it's drivable. So, today, though, we're going to be building... A military style. This is more of a like spy tech. But we're going to be building something a little bit different. Now I usually like I said. I always like to build my boats in this location. If it's available. Just because of the fact that the water is not deep enough. For anything to get up here to you. You can see that megalodon right there. Can't get past that sandbar. So this little area actually acts like a little protective cove. For any and all ships that you want to build. You can see, all through this island chain, the water is not that deep. It is deep enough for a boat, but it's not deep enough for wild animals to get in. And you can actually get a Mosasaurus, like, right in through this channel, if you're really, really careful. Or you can swim it around and park it over there on the backside. Alright, but let's go ahead. And I'm going to move this boat to that little spot right there so that I have my canal open. Yeah, you can see this boat in motion. 
let's go ahead and let's turn it on. And we're going to drive it. As you can see, the camera height is perfect. We're going to go ahead and move it to right in here. That way it's still protected. And then we'll turn that off, of course. Because you don't want to leave your motor running. All right, so the first thing, of course, we want to do is get us a boat in the water, get it filled up, and get it into build position. Change here real quick. All right, there we go. <clears throat> All right, so first, like I said, first thing we want to do is go ahead and get our boat in the water. Now, we're, of course, this canal is where we're going to be building our boat. So let me get right down here on the shore and fall down. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and grab me a boat here. Okay. Here we go. A boat. One boat. Pop that down on our bar. We'll just pop that in the water. All right, we got our boat. Now we need to get gasoline. On the Atrici shirt, I am a VIP admin. Basically, I'm just a sponsor with some perks. So I'm not an actual admin. So if you come over here, no, I can't give you free stuff. I've had people ask me that before, and unfortunately, that's outside of my power. The only thing I do, um, Atricia does have a flag system. And basically, the flags change about once a month. And of course, you just go in and you paint your flag the new, whatever color the new color is. And that keeps your base protected. It's just a way of... Them checking you know, if you're an active player or not, because if you're not, then of course you're basically wiped to free up room to keep the servers clean. All right, so we got that. Whoops. Go ahead and pop some gasoline in here. And they do have a stacking mod, so things stack a little bit more because it is at 58, so you kind of need that. All right, we just want to get it kind of centered into the uh, the canal here. And that's just so that when we start building, we're not hitting the shore. So that way we don't have to move the boat again. All right, now we got that. Now the first thing we're going to do is, of course, you always, first, after you get your boat and get it, the first thing you want to do is... Make sure sorry, is uh, go ahead and figure out which material you're going to be using to build your boat. Because you got to know that because that, what material you're building it out of can dictate a lot of how you're going to build it. I'm going to be building this one out of metal because we caught my last boat. You know that metal is my favorite because it's nice, it's clean, it's even. But you always build out of whatever you want to build out of. Right? Throw that there. Oh, there we go. That put in. And then, we, of course, we want to grab our ceiling. All right. So, first thing we got to do. Is we're going to grab a hold of our boat that centers your character left to right in front to back. So when you look down, you're actually looking at the center of your boat. All right, so now we want to put one of these in and we want that to be centered. All 
And that literally starts the whole build. Do that, and then we can put that down. As you can see, what you want, of course, just like all my boat builds. You always want that motor and the thing to be in the center. Because that way you can basically cover it up with just one. question here and I do not mind answering any questions about ARC or anything like that because that's why I do doing these videos tutorials on my builds because people have asked me before how did I build them or how did this work or something I'm always available to help right now we're just going to take pillars here put them in the foundations and that drops your foundations down We want to try and get the top of the foundation to be as flush with the floor as possible. And the reason for that is, is the, the foundations help hide the actual boat boat, the metal boat. So we can do this. Oops. And always make sure you know what you're picking up. Because you don't want to pick up the wrong thing. Is that We want to lower it until that right there sticks out just a little bit. But if you go one more lower than your foundation line, it should be inside the boat, and that's not what you want. Alright, then we're going to go here, here. Just like that right there. Now, like, uh, on Atricia, this, the cluster that I play on, the uh, boats are set on official settings. So, a lot of my builds, I've had to alter this or alter that to make sure they stay within the parameters. An official setting is from the center of the metal boat. It's a 13 by 13 square with each corner removed. That's how wide, wide um, you can go. But that's what we're going to build inside of. All right. Now we're just going to go here, here, and the reason, no, the foundations, because like if I tried to snap a foundation, there's no support. There's nothing, no ground for it to connect into. So we have to trick it by putting a ceiling in. And then once we do that, we can put foundations to the bottom of the ceiling. And then you pick that ceiling up. And there you go. Your foundations will stay intact. That's what we're wanting to go for. So let's see here. And of course, if you can pre-plan your boat build or any build that you're doing, if you can pre-plan it, um, believe it or not, just simple graph paper. And then you can kind of at least get your foundations planned out. And that goes a long way to knowing what you're going to build. See, for me, a lot of the builds that I do, um, they're actually planned out on graph. But... Instead of, uh, I actually have, I would say graph paper, I do it on the PC. And for the triangles, I have those shapes predetermined. So I can actually snap them all together, pre-plan the whole build. Okay. Plus, this boat I've built several times, so I kind of know what it's going to look like. Now, what I want to do here, of course, is we're going to do the hatch frame over it. That way we have access to our boat. And that also helps me put the walls on the inside. 
because you always want them to be on the inside. Now, by doing this, though, it does create an extra snap point, but you can tell real quick if you get it in the right place or not. There we go. All right, and then we're going to put a wall here. And then here and here. So we'll have, this is where you'll drive the boat from. But once we get, start getting it in, this is where you'll set your generator. So they're going to be on the bottom floor. That way it's well hidden. Oh, not necessarily hidden, but more out of the way. And that's what you're wanting. Right, we're going to go ahead and sling us up a door. And a door. Believe it or not, that's that's the bulk of it right there. All right, and now we're going to start building the. We're going to go ahead and get our foundations down for the rear. Can't remember if it was one or two spaces. I'll have to check here in a second. Now on the rear, like I said, you have to stay within the confines of what, of how big it'll say it'll let, it'll let you build. Like this would be a 13 by 13. Like that right there. Then we should be okay. Now here's the, here's the kicker. Make sure. Yeah. And make sure it didn't turn red. If it turned red, then we would have to shrink it down by whoops. I forgot to put those in. Eh, no worries. Whoops. Want to make sure we pick up the ceiling and not the metal floor. There we go. Okay, so these two back in. If it ever double pops like that, just pick one of them up. Sometimes you'll it'll try to snap two in the same place. I mean, it's art. Okay, so that's going to be the rear, right? Now we can go ahead and start putting our front on. And just... I think I built that one too many. But we're going to leave it. That's just more space. But you've also got to keep in mind your structure limit. Because I could build this first floor huge, but then I wouldn't have any structure limit left for the second floor. And that's, we kind of need that second floor. Like I said, this is going to be a military style boat, so we're going to be doing some neat little switching and swapping. Alright, so from here, we start going, I think, let me just get a look right here. Yeah. This is where we want to start swapping. We'll pick this one up because we don't want it. Yeah, there we go. Remember what I said about sometimes it'll try to put some an extra one in. If we go down it pop that triangle in the wrong place. We need to pick that up. Oh, give me just a second.
Oh, let's see if we can get that. There we go. Got it in the right place. And yes, my characters are always named the exact same thing. YouTube everything. That way I'm, it's easy for people to find me in any game because it's always the same name. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pick these ceilings up here. And what this does is this starts getting the bow of our boat to come in one time and then an extension and then come in again. And then we can put our point on for the, for the bow of our ship. I said if you ever double snap one, just pick it up. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Then we'll go ahead and get our angles in. And you want to pick these ceilings back up here. Now, if you want to do a point on it, you can't. There's still enough room. There we go. So that's got, that is your base of your military boat. Nothing too fancy, nothing too major. But now comes the fun part. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put a row of ceilings here. Now, if you see here, see how the lines are going away from the boat? Well, you don't want that for what we're going to be doing. So we're going to have to turn that 90 degrees. So what you want to do then is you've got to create an extra snap point. Because it only has one snap point. So you're going to go with your wall, and then a ceiling, okay, and then two walls down. This actually creates another snap point. And you want the line, the bottom lines on the metal. That's why I use metal, because there's just a lot of neat things about it that help with setting it up. See how that one went in with the lines coming away from it? That's not what you want. So we're, we're going to flip it. All right, and then once you flip it, then we're going to pick all of these walls back up. And you'll see why I did that here in just a second. And all we got to do is just go down through here, making sure that every one we put down is flipped. And there's an easy way, way to tell they're, if they're flipped the right way without having to look. See this short bar right here and this long bar? They, go, they run the same direction as those lines on the bottom. So instead of having to place one down and then look under, you can just watch the ones on top. And as long as they're facing the same way, you're golden. Sometimes they don't want to go. There we go. Right, and then we're going to go here, here. See, because this one right here doesn't connect to those that have already flipped, we're going to have to do that same wall ceiling trick. And flip that there. Bring one down, bring it down again. All right, got it in the right place, and we'll pick these back up. Okay. Now, the whole reason we did that right there is because the military ship is a little bit wider than my regular ships, but it also has a curved hull. 
So we're going to bring down the ceiling. We're using the, um, the sloped metal roof. All right. And then I can get in the right place here without freaking it out too much. There we go. I left the engine running. You can hear it in the water. By doing that, we're able to put these in. Now, you can do this regardless of the material you're using. Even if you're using wood, uh, you can do it. Because I do it all the time when I build pirate ships. I give it a curved hull so it actually looks like a ship. Of course, we have the rugged storm moving in here on rag. Now our, sh now our boat actually has a curved hull like it's supposed to. And then once you turn, let's go underwater here. And once we start turning these blocks, that just fills the hole out on the bottom. And I mean, you can even come down, you, know, you can keep coming down if you wanted to. If that's the style that you were going for. You can bring these on down. Now you'd have to build support, of course, for it. But you can bring them on down, have it come all the way to a point. Just depends on how deep you want it to look like it's set in the water. All right. But now from here, see that right there is what I was looking for. Whenever I thought I'd build it one too many. So this line right here is the end of how far you can build out. Because it doesn't encompass the corners. So all we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of one full line of squares and put triangles in. And just shrink it back by one. I thought it looked a little bit longer than normal. Now here's the, another good thing about boats. That whole run's not connected to anything. It's just, it thinks it's connected to the boat, but it's not. Alright, so you can actually build a boat with a hole in the bottom of it. Towards the front or towards the back, of course. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and get this run put on. If I'm not mistaken, that one right there, double tapped. Yep, it did. There we go. And I hope everybody's doing okay tonight. Everything's going good for you. No troubles. If you're where the cold or the bad weather is, I hope everything's going good. I know I am in cold weather, so it is cold outside. Alright, we'll go ahead and get these ceilings picked up right here. All right, now by doing that, that should allow us to, yeah, there we go. And then come up here. And then just come on around. Now, of course, on the back side, oh, sorry, I had to scratch my eye. On the back part here, we may not leave this. I may actually turn it into a set of stairs so that you can get in and out of the water, but we might do that later. As you can see, it's only going to give us that one. It's still giving us two snap points, but it's just the reverse of that one. So we've got to go in, put in our wall, put in a ceiling. Because you see, the ceiling goes in correctly. Because it's trying to snap to the wall snap point. If we try to put a ceiling in here, it's going to try and snap to the foundation. Which, if you notice, the foundations are all turned side to side. It's just the way they place. Whenever you're doing straight forward. You can, there is a workaround for that, but <laughs> this is quicker. All right, we'll put our walls in. That gives us, oops. This is our double snap point for our ceiling. All 
There we go. And then we just pick up these metal walls. Alright, and now we can just continue putting our ceilings down. There we go. Sometimes they can be aggravating. There we go. Alright, we'll go ahead and get this one set up. Now, the, the technique that I'm using to flip these ceilings around, if you've ever had trouble putting a hatch frame in, this technique works on hatch frames as well. So that you can get that hatch frame on the exact opening the exact right way. Just like we did on the, uh, the blue uh, tsunami boat. We flip that hatch frame so that it opens the correct way. Come on. I think I had it in overshot. There we go. I got trigger happy. Alright, get all this picked up. Good deal. And go ahead and put these in. And then we'll just put our front end on. Now hopefully I haven't extended it out too far. Or if I double tap. There we go. We'll know when we're going to put this front piece on. Uh, yep. I went one too many. Okay, so we're just going to put a snub nose. And that'll actually make a point whenever we put the... Like I said, even if you have this perfect vision of what you want to build, you can always adjust on the fly. There is nothing wrong with that. Sometimes that's just what you gotta do. Alright, that looks good. I'm pleased with that. Alright, so let's go ahead and we'll start getting all of our bottoms on. Now, I recommend um, getting your foundation down and then putting your bottom on before you start putting walls on because the moment you attach a wall to that ceiling or that foundation that gives another snap point and this becomes a nightmare because instead of having just four snap points that you got on the top you got one forward one back and on the bottom you got one forward and one back you attach a wall that now adds four more snap points so now you have eight snap points to contend with and it becomes really, really um, nerve-wracking. Yes, we'll, we'll say nerve-wracking. Because generally, out of eight tries, you're not going to hit it a single time. You're going to wind up beating your head against the wall. So even with four snap points, I'm, that it's continuously trying to go through. Which is a problem you have on boats is it won't try to find one snap point. It'll try to find all the snap points at once. Wait for the server to catch up. Yeah, I knew that's what's happening. If you ever try to place an item and it doesn't, it's usually the server trying to catch up. Say that or it's doing an auto save and you're getting stuck in it. There we go. See that 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 can be a decent front right there. I mean you could go out another one, but you're gonna run into that because I'm at max length front and back. So the only way around that would be to shrink like this section by one. But then you're going to run into the chance of the pontoon sticking out. 
for me, the military style that I'm going for, a, a two-block front works just fine. Works absolutely fine. Oops, too close. Where we ran into that was when we were building the lighthouse. If you're too close, it's going to just try and put it wherever it can. But if you back up and limit the amount of snap points that it can reach, then you can effectively put it just about wherever you want it. Yeah, okay, we got one in. And I recommend doing the ones going downward first and then put that middle piece in on the bottom because that way you know they're at the right height. See yeah, how it's all level all the way across? And that's what you want because it's all trying to snap to the same level snap point. There we go. And just put this one in. And those, if you try to go in at an angle, don't try to go in straight forward. But if you go in at an angle, then it kind of sees the snap point and thinks it's the only one. It makes it a little bit easier. You like that right there? It just snaps straight in. But if you look at it straight forward, see, it doesn't know. It just freaks out. Like that right there. I got a little bit too close. It freaked out. There we go. And just always remember, even, it doesn't matter what you're building, a boat, a castle, a beach house, a box. Even if you wanted to build a box, it's your build. Build what you like. And go from there. And don't ever say, oh, I can't build this or I don't know how. Because that's not true. You just don't know how yet. When I first started playing builder type games, my very first game was Minecraft. And you think, oh, building blocks. Super easy. And yeah, you can build a box. The first thing I learned how to build, believe it or not, I built a McDonald's. Because I got bored. I was tired of digging in a cave. And I built McDonald's. Oh, here we go. Just finish this up back here. There we go. So if you put, if you can get these in first, because they're going to be the hard ones. And then you come back and put these in. They just snap right into play. They're just waiting to go in. All you got to do is snap them. There we go. Interesting. I when I was building the uh, the the perfect uh, half circle dome base that I built, I, it took forty five minutes per arch, and I had twenty six arches. And there was many times I'd put something in, I had to go hunt for where it went because it was I don't know where it was. But there you go. That is the base of the military boat. <laughs> So it looks like it's actually sitting in the water. It has a hole to it. So there we go. That's the easy part. Now we're going to start putting in our first floor. Now our first floor is only going to be one wall high with a makeshift kind of skylight between it and the second floor. And that's so we can get our fabricator in. But this particular boat has way too many guns on it. I mean, way too many guns. And first time I ever built this, I kind of got attacked by a lead and it kind of may have eat my boat. So I put enough guns on it that a lead can't get near it. So, and we're going to start right there. And every one of these is a port for a gun. Okay. Now. 
this is if you want your gun to be seen. Because you take the gun and it'll be sticking out the porthole. That's the way I'm going to do it. However, you can use that same take your any frame technique that I showed you in the ship build over in when I was building the, the lighthouse. I'll just show you right here because this is a really neat little trick. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up some tape windows. As soon as, is that them right there? Tape windows, all right? And some tape window frames. We're going to drop those down on our bar. And let's see, I'm running, uh, just put them in the last, last two spots. All right? So... What you'll do is you put in your your tech wall, right? Or your tech window frame. And then we're gonna pop a tech window in there. Alright. And then we're just gonna take a metal window frame and override it. And looky there. We now have tech windows and metal window frames. And that you can do that if you want to hide your gun behind the window. Now, the only thing is it does leave a little crack across the top because tape windows are a little bit smaller than wood or than metal. But you can always come back and add something to that if you wanted to. Now, I like my guns to be seen just because. So, I'm going to take that window out. But that's how you do it. And that works with any door frame. We could have put an adobe or a wooden and it would still keep the window. All right, then we're going to start adding our metal back here. We're going to skip us the middle. Like that right there. And then we're going to come up and fill in this angle right here. And then across the front here. Like that right there. So that's that's the look of our boat right there. Like I said, if you want a more pointed front, then you just have to move pick out this row of squares and move the front end back to here. Or leave this run of squares right here completely out. And you have a V shape. But you know just a square point. I like doing the angle in once straight and then angle. Because it gives the boat a little bit more character. But you can move this back at least one I think. Yeah. Because you would move that back to right here. So what do y'all think? Do you think we need to leave it like that? Or should we bring it out to a point? Hmm. I don't know. I think we should... I don't know. Let's just clean it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and go with that. And uh, uh, let's go ahead and make it to a point. All right. And remember, it thinks this section of the boat thinks it's still connected. So that's why it's floating. There we go. All right now, I'm not going to do that here. We're going to pick up this row. Hey, there's a triangle I misplaced somehow. There we go. He's picked up here. And we'll 
take it this one and this one. Alright, so that's got that removed, so we'll go ahead and we'll pop these in. And get our foundation support put in. Then we can pick these ceilings right here back up. I hope everybody's enjoying the stream. Don't forget to leave a comment and a like. Feel free to say hi or bye or leave the number one. Or leave the rabbit. Because the rabbit is white hair. Yep. Alright, so let's go ahead and get these foundations put in. And then we can put our front, whoops, we're putting our angle on. Now, if you're ever building in metal, because it is very shiny, feel free to paint it black as you're going, just to avoid the glare from the sun. I've gotten used to it because I've built in it so much, and I know that I see the glare just automatically turn and look a different direction. Right, and of course when we do this, it's going to hide most of that, so you won't see it. Right, and then let's pop this. That gives us our multiple snap point. That's what we want. Get that turned back right. There we go. Then we can do the same to the other side. Yeah, I think I think that's going to look a little bit better with more of a point to it. There we go. Hold on, let me. Let my game catch up. Right. Start building the front. Okay, yeah. That right there is going to look better. That looks better than the two parts. Let's get our angles back. Nope. Start the fun of getting these figured out. Oh, that's definitely not right. I think I'm too close. I was trying to find it. Do another snap point. Back off. Just, there we go. Went right in. Good deal. Uh, I knew it was too good to be true. Follow me went in first try. That'd been something. Server safe. A second to catch up. There we go. Excuse <laughs> me. And pop those in. Sure we're trying to snap to the one in the front. That's not what we want. There we go. 
this to you? There we go. Did get a look at that profile. Yeah, that looks better. That looks better. The double one's just too much. in perfect put them gaps in right and pop that in over there stay what go what I say no no you won't there we go mm -hmm. all right got all of them in and we can add our gun port up here yeah uh, I mean you can turn if you want to you can have every single one of these be a gun port that is completely fine to do it's however you want to do it I tend to put mine just here on the sides because I know that I'm going to have guns on, on the deck. And it'll take care of anything on the front. Plus, usually if you see a lead in front of you, you're going to turn anyway, which broadsides your boat. And so that's six guns right there on each side, just on the bottom floor. So that's 12 guns all together. Not much is going to live that. Right. So now we can start putting our first floor roof on. But before I do it, I'm going to go ahead and put my guns in place. That way I can see them, get a good view from up here. And put them exactly where I want them. Of course, using the uh, school bar at the bottom as a ruler can help line, you, line it up. So let's go ahead and get our turret. And remember, it has to be regular turrets because uh, heavy turrets won't go on a boat. So as much as we want to use those, they won't go on a boat. So we have to use these. Which I think is more fitting. You've got little stacks of Gatling guns. All right, so what you want to do whenever you're putting it, depending on the look, of course, center it in your boat. And if you bump them all the way up against it, the gun will kind of stick out. In the right spot. I'm just using the two lines. The line on each side of the window is a guide. And then wait until the boat's at high tide. Because boats do rise and fall in the water. Of course, if you're standing on the boat, you tend to move with it. But I like doing it from here because I can actually look down and see exactly if I'm getting the legs right up against the wall or not. Which is what I'm wanting. Then when you add these get power, the end of that gun barrel is going to stick out of the window a little bit. So it just looks really cool. So we're going to go here and get ourselves lined up. That looks pretty good. There we go. Until it turns green. For the boat to rise. There we go. Easy peasy. Of course, you can always use the ladder trick if you want to be precisely lined up. If you're, if you're not that good at doing it by the ruler, just pop a ladder down, climb it, it'll automatically 
Whichever way that ladder's facing is the way you're going to face. That's got our first row of protection on our boat. Like I said, this boat is good for a solo player or maybe two people. You might be able to get four beds, four bunk beds, or two bunk beds, which would give you four beds. But this is more for a, a solo person just wanting something to go out and joyride in. Maybe you've got to go out into the ocean somewhere and harvest stuff. Well, this boat, as long as you've got, you know, gasoline and generators going and your guns got ammo, it can act as protection, killing everything around the area. You can dive in, go harvest whatever you need to, get back to the boat, it keeps you protected. And trust me, I have seen this boat active out in the middle of the water, leads, nothing could get near it. So, it was fully protected. And if you, if you log in every day, and keep a check on your boat and keep gasoline in it and you can park it just about anywhere in the ocean and as long as you keep it supplied it'll keep you covered all right so now that we've got our guns in the place that i wanted we're gonna go ahead and start doing our first floor now like i said on the uh on the blue tsunami you want to place these Just it's kind of hard to see in the dark. Maybe the server won't get too upset. And let there be light. Okay, so you want these to be set so that the bars are running front to back. That way they look like... They actually add to the look, the aesthetic of looking like supports for the actual boat. There we go. This one we don't need. This will be a triangle. Now, if you want to build this floor two walls high, that's your prerogative. I don't do it because once I build this, and then the top floor is going to be two walls high. That puts your camera, from whenever you're driving, at the top of your boat, out, uh, like sitting on the roof so you can still see. You go one wall higher, and your camera is going to be inside your boat, and you're going to be trying to look all the way through the front windshield. Not an easy thing to do. Now, of course, you can drive in orbital, but you know, it kind of takes away that first person, you know, driving experience. Okay, that's that. You can see all of them are facing the same way, which is what you want. If one ever goes in wrong, just pick it up, put down another one, she goes into the way you want it to go. There we go. These are all facing the same. Put those in. There we go. Then we're going to go here and do the same for this. Luckily, this one don't have extra snap points, so it can only go in one direction. Right, and then we're going to start filling in this little gap. And you're wanting to watch whenever you're putting triangles in, that they stay level. Like one didn't go to one snap point and one tried to go to another. Because what will happen is you'll have one or two. Whenever you look across, you can see the edge of it. That means it's a little bit higher. You don't want that because 
once you start building your next floor, that gap goes up really big. Look here. Yep, that's good. We're just going to continue it towards the front. Filling it in. Get our floor. Alright. Finally we had one. See how that one tried to snap to a different snap point? Well, whenever you're trying to build a metal boat, and everything's supposed to be smooth, that sticks out like a sore thumb. So we'll pick that up and then snap to the right one. And usually just pick it up, put it back down, they'll work. See the difference between those two? That one's snapped to the wrong snap point. That's not what we want. We want that snap point. That way we can put that in, you can toggle it if you have to, and get it on the right one. That way, when you start your next floor, everything's lined up like it should. There we go. All right. Well, that looks good. That looks good. Now, there's a reason I'm not going to do this just yet. I can go ahead and do the back side. I can do this side. We're going to leave a hole in the center. There's a reason for that. Because remember, our fabricator's got to go in here. And a fabricator is a wall and a half high. So if we just make this whole thing one wall high, like right here, our fabby would stick up through it. And that's not what we want. No, no, no. So what we're going to do, we're going to get lined up on the metal. I'm using that ruler at the bottom. Once I get lined up, I'm going to take, remember that it's five on one side, five on the other side. And that line right in between them, we're going to use that as our guide. Get that right on the tip of the triangle. So that way we're about as the center as we can get. All right? Now we're going to get our fabby. Fabricator. I have an extra one. If I don't, I'll pick one up. Yeah, I don't. So I grab one. One. So it's ten. That'll work. Drop that on our bar. And now that we're in the center of the boat and we're level. We're going to look straight down. Walk right up to it. Look straight down. Other. What I'm trying to, what I'm doing here is you see that line where the foundations are, where they meet, like to the just below where my fat bee is? What we're trying to do is line it up perfectly on that. By getting out here and looking straight down, and we already know we're in the middle because we figured that out when we lined it up with the triangle foundation right there. Look straight down, get it right on that line. And the reason we do it that way. Is now our fabricator is sticking up like right in the middle of our hole, which is what we want. Ta da! So not bad, not bad at all. <clears throat> okay. Now that we got that, so that let us know, that's one, that's it really the only thing you have to place as you're building. Make sure you get it in the right spot. You can build the entire boat and then go back and add it in later. But you're trying to add it in in a one wall high spot. 
and get it in the right place. It's kind of hard. Let me get a drink. Right, now we can start adding our walls to the second floor. And the first thing we're going to do is put in our doorways. And we're going to use, you can use single doorways, you can use double doorways. Whatever your preference is. I like the double doorway for the outside entrance just because it looks better. So, I'm going to pop this wall down there. There. Whoops, and like. And the reason I'm putting these walls in first before my doorways is to make sure that my doorways get on the right snap point. There, right there. Good deal, got that one on the first try. Yep, that went on the wrong one. That's on the outside. Don't want that. There we go. See what that does is gives you a nice clean look. You definitely don't want a gap. That just looks, oh, what is it? A scruff? Yeah, scruff. Yeah, scruff. Go ahead and get our walls put in here. Come on, there we go. And there. Now here, we're going to do a double door frame. Do it on the inside. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to have a turret gun hidden in the front of the boat. Just because it looks cool. Here we get this and in the right place. There we go. Other side. Like that right there. Okay, and then we're going to come around here. Around on the inside. Whoops. We're going to throw down our turret. Then we're going to use that same tool bar on the, on the straight edge. I said that's why I, I love to use metal because it's all straight edges. So i got plenty of stuff to line it up on. We're going to get that right in the center. Pull back until the legs are on the inside. Right about there. I think that'll work. Like we could probably go forward a little bit. Right about. Let's go right about. Let's see what that looks like. I think that'll work. Because you want that, you don't mind the turret part sticking out, but I really just want the gun itself sticking out. Get it from the side. Yeah, that, sh that should be okay there. As far as it looks. And then we're going to put a cap on it. If I can get it in the right place. That is definitely not the right place. Try that again. Is that where I can see what I'm doing? Nope. But this might take a few tries. That's okay. Be well worth it once we get it done. There, no, that's pointing straight up. Looks like the hatch is open. Let's do the hatch closed this time. Try it again. Well, it really does not want to go in, does it? And if you're ever having trouble getting one to go in, just switch places. There we go. Switching places, it works. 
And even though we know that's the legs of the of the turret, you can't really tell it. And once that's activated, just the gun part will be sticking out. So it'll look like a little mini gun in the frame. Alright, we can go ahead and start doing the walls. Because all of this is going to be walkway. So, that way we actually have a walkway around the outside of it. There we go. Remember, this is going to be two walls high. And just go ahead and go across two walls. Here. And we're going to stop right there. Put that one in by mistake. I sure did. Okay, we'll just pick that up. Right, and now we're going to do our angles. Before we do the angles, we're going to go ahead and put. We don't need that. We don't need that. We need these. So we'll go ahead and put these in. Or we'll just put a wall wherever we feel like it, right? Doesn't matter where. If you notice, I, I saw this just then. So all of those are correct. Until you get around right there. That one's out of place. I didn't catch it when we put it in, so let's fix that now. There we go. Now that's all taken care of. All right, so now we gotta put our angles in. What we got this is gonna do it's gonna allow two things. One to get on the roof and another to cover that right there up. Before we do anything we've got to put triangle down here. Make sure it snaps into the right place. There we go. And put one down right there. But those are just temporary. We're going to pick those up once this is done. Over here, we'll put this one in. And the reason we did that is because all of these are snapped on the inside. So if you didn't have this one snapped on the inside, then it's going to stick out just a little bit past the edge of that wall. And it's not going to be smooth. So you definitely want it to be smooth. Pick this up. Grab that. That one in. All right. Now that we've got that slope in, go back and start putting in our angles. So you get far enough away there. There we go. Pop in these bottom ones. Whoops. Get it to go in right. There we go. It keeps wanting to pop the wrong way.
But that one definitely went the wrong way. It just went completely down south. Gonna be one of those that's a booger to get in. There we go. Alright, and then all I'll do is well. Now, a lot of times you'd be tempted from here to do um, sloped metal, but there's a problem with that. It's gonna leave a massive overhang and a lip at the top. So that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our roof on just this one run. Alright, and then we're gonna go back and do. Metal stairs. And hope we can get them in the right place. Because it's trying to snap to two different snap points. There we go. Pick this one up. Now, if you want a nice louvered look, see, I'm going for the, the sloped, smooth look. Now, if you want a louvered look, you can actually take, do it over here on the side. You can actually put in a metal roof like that and louver it, but that only look correct, kind of correct, if you come in all the way down, in my opinion. I'm going for that smoother look, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick that up. Well, no, not that. That. Right, and then we're going to go and just switch those to a ramp, and there's the back of it. So it's nice and clean, ain't got to worry about it too much. Right, we're going to go ahead and finish out our roof here. And like I said, you can build your boats however you want, it's your boat. If you're going for a certain look or a certain style, then some techniques might not work for this where they'd work for something else, and that's absolutely fine. There is no wrong or right way. Unless it's a box. Okay, so we've got that. Now we'll add our roof on here. Now remember, I want to keep those lines going the same way. If I can get them to go that way. There we go. That way, whenever the whole reset, that when you look here on the inside, definitely make looks better. I had one fake going the opposite. There we go. And make sure they're all lined up because if one's out of place you notice it real quick and if you notice it somebody else is going to point it out to you quick and in a hurry all right so now we're going to build the front cab now for this we're going to fill this in here we're going to create a, a second floor come on There we go, got that one right. I think I just put a ceiling somewhere I didn't want to. I sure did. I don't know how I managed to double stack them. There we go. Let's got that. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to wall this off. Put us in a little secret room right here. And we're going to, just going to single door this. Because it's a service entry. That way we can get in here to refill our gun if we need to or whatever. And 
and we will go ahead and throw this up a metal ladder. Nope, not up there, not there, right there. Did that get in the right place? Nope, it is flipped around backwards. And that happens, especially whenever you this many snap points. What you want to do is hook straight down. I can get up in here. Deal. Right now we'll build our cockpit. It's just going to be a very, very simple, easy cockpit. Nothing too major. Definitely not going to go square front. Nope, nope, nope. We're going to do an angled front. Just give it a little something, something. Yeah, I think that adds a little bit to it. And then we'll just do an angled front. Okay, I'm going to have to put those on my bar because it's going to be a new thing. Watch me put it on my bar. And the next one I put in, be perfect. That's usually the way it goes. Told you. All right. There we go. We got our big little front end there. Good all the way around here. Plus, if we need to get up on top, we can just walk up the back. Right, so let's go ahead and get some railing put in so that I don't fall off. Now we're going to skip here. Go to there. Said I do play on Atricia, which is a great cluster. We've got tons of tons of the maps. Uh, they're all PVE, uh, and of course uh, 50x. We've got modded flyers. Got Insta Tame. So it's a great server to come and hang out and have fun. They do host events from time to time. Those are always announced in their Discord. But it's just a great little place to be, place to be. Love the server. Go ahead and get our fencing up. And I'm going to leave this back open until I get, decide whether I'm going to do entrance stairs, like scuba stairs or whatever. But actually, that would lead you, that would be going into the first floor. So I can go ahead and put these up here. Now, if you notice the stairs here, how they're sunk in, and these are sunk in, and get around here, I forgot to sink these, or at least this one. So that's something you always want to look for. Just because you have railings up doesn't mean it looks good. You want to sink them in. That way they're all lined up as even as you can possibly get them. There we go. Good. We're going to go ahead and put our ladder in here. Now for this one, I'm going to first, I'm going to put down a ceiling. I'm going to grab my ladder. 
I'm going to use that ceiling to make sure my ladder is facing the right way. Just climb up. So we're good. Oops. I'm going to pick this ceiling up. That gives me something to snap to. The whole reason I did that. So that it snaps in the correct place. Now, I should be able to just grab a hold anywhere and get right up in the boat. Now, of course, I'm going to pick this one back up. See if I'm in the water and I come swimming up to the boat. And I can just grab the ladder and it's going to pop me out of the water instantly. So that's going to help out. All right, let's go ahead and get this one put in. Walk up to it, look down. Then give you your climb up. Now you can spend time doing it, just trying to get it correctly on the wall. But if you do that trick, It'll, and you stay far enough away, it'll automatically give you the correct snap point. There we go. It's all about distance a lot of times. Grab that one, pick it up. Now we can get up and into our boat from the front side. Good deal. But all in all, not looking too bad. Right now, we're going to add a railing up here. Whoa, shot me in the air. We can go ahead and add our railing up here on top. And what this is for is if you have a flyer and you want to land it on your boat, if you take off or if it glitches, the railing keeps it from popping off as easily. And if you're, having, if you're trying to land something big, like a wyvern, for instance, this gives you something to aim for instead of just shooting off the other side. So it's, it's like a catcher's net. There we go. Now, this is the other reason why I did stairs and not slope ceilings. Is if you wanted to, you could go back and do that right there. And have your, your railing slope down. Now, if you wanted to bring it all the way down. Oops. You could go back and add. Whoops. I don't know if I can get far enough away to get it to go in right. that was bad. But you can go back and add stairs here and turn those ramps. There we go. Like that right there. See, it'd still give you that nice little cut-in look right there. Or you can even put an angle off the bottom of the stairs to fill that gap in. And then you can add railings to it if you wanted to. There we go. So now you just have a straight... Little, a safety little ramp right there if you wanted to. The only problem is, you won't be able to get past it right here. That's the only downside. So, I wasn't worried about having that. So, I just wanted to show it to you. Because I'm not going to have that. There we go. That's good enough for me. Right ain't there. All right, 
Okay, oh. That is your basic boat. As far as the build of it. Of course, it's still in, it's still in the scrap metal yard, so. Now we've got to figure out do, how do we want to do this right here. Things that make you go, hmm. What about... We're just going to make this one up as we go. Oh, gotta wait on the server. Oh, I know you'll go in. Interesting. Let's pick up the middle floor. Or pick up the floor. Wrong thing. Middle ceiling. Pick it up. See if we can get these stairs to pop in on the top. Okay, good, good. Switch it to the top. I like that. Getting these walls right here up. Because the ceiling's actually attached to the bottom of the stairs. We didn't need the walls in the first place. Beginning to catch up. Big deal. Flip that. Okay, it won't work. But it was an idea. But I thought we're at the max that it can go, so. 
it's a good idea. We can probably cut down the back of the boat a little bit if we wanted to, but I don't want to. We're just going to go with that right there. Of course, we are at the max limit, so, I mean, we literally can't put nothing out here. I mean, our best bet would just be a ramp. Can do we can do that right there and just put some angles on it and if we want to do a, what I call a scuba entrance we could but we had to cut the back of the boat down by one Which, don't get me wrong, I have done that before. Cut down the entire rear of a boat just to get an angle right. But I like that right there. Put some railings on it. And now we have an entrance. A water entrance, but that works. Hey, where's my? Do I have some doors? Doors. Oh, we're going to use our just standard metal doors on this boat, just because of the type we're building. I know I'm very partial to like tech doors, but sometimes they just don't look right depending on the build. Uh, did I ever put a door frame in there? I did not. So let me put a door frame in first. All right. On Smith. There we go. Now we just have a good old fashioned water entrance. Nothing big. one over here. All right, now that's got all of that taken care of. So now the only thing left to do is going to be the inside, but before we do that, of course, we're going to paint our boats. So I'm going to do this a little bit different. Um, like the blue tsunami, I just painted it blue because I mean, that's what it was and it's very awesome. But we're actually going to do a very unique paint job on this one. As soon as I get my brush. Instead of spraying it, we're actually going to do something a little different. We're going to paint it. And let me, let me get one right here and I'll show you what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is whip out my brush and I'm going to smack it. Get back up to my colors. There we go. All right. And the reason we do this, we're going first. We're going to pick up some forest green. All right. And just going to click. So we want to paint the metal itself forest green. Got that paint, right? That's got those painted. Now, since it's supposed to be a military boat, we definitely don't want all this shiny metal. So we know that Region 1 is going to be the green. Region 2 or Region 4 is those locks on top. 
Now paint those green. Which one? That one. The rivets are, of course, five. And region two is the bars. So we want regions one and four are forest green. But we want regions two and five to be mud color. So what we're going to do, so now that we know our regions, go back and grab our two paint brushes. Or paint cans. Sorry, not paint brushes. Okay, and we're going to fill it with forest green. Right? We're still select it. We want regions one and what was it? What was it? Four. You see I've got one and four enabled. And don't worry if you accidentally paint something you shouldn't you can always go back and paint it later. Go around and give this thing a good spritzing. Deal. Far away there. So far, it's so good, looking good. I wasn't doing my uppy downy. But getting both of them. All right. All right now we're not going to paint the the walkways that same green, but we are going to paint the windows. Okay, so we want to go ahead. And get everything selected. Everybody knows it's L2 and then your direction pad for your num numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 1, 2, 3, 4 and then L2, L1 to select regions 5 and 6 with the square and the triangle. Those selected we're going to go ahead and paint our metal frames. There we go. And those match. Now, if you ever accidentally select the wrong region, you just put your gun up, stick it back up, and then reset your regions, and you're good to go. Right? Now, that knocks a lot, a lot, did I mention a lot, of that glare off of it. So that looks a lot better. All right, now we're going to pick up our mud. Mud's your dark brown. All right, and we're going to select all the regions except for one and four. All right, now we're going to go back. What that's going to do, uh, make sure you don't have region one selected like I did. Let's show it over here. It's going to paint just the rivets and those bars. So like under here. Get all of our rivets painted. Now on the these right here, I think it's region 4 is the bar. 
We'll find out. No, the, the bars are going to stay silver, so that's okay. Just going to go ahead and get all those rivets painted. Oh, there's one of them, yes. That way you don't, it's not all the same color. It has a little bit of a breakup in it. So it doesn't all look the same. Now, of course, depending on what what regions you're painting and how much will depict on how fast your your paint runs out on you. We'll go ahead and move up here. That way you go ahead and get that, knock that shine off of that. You don't want something bright and shiny, unless that's what you're going for. I mean, you can paint it black and silver, which is usually, I paint a lot of stuff black and silver. That's my most common tank color combination, but you can paint it whatever you want. sure we don't hit the windows as we're coming around. You also have to be careful whenever you're building boats that you're not building in the vicinity of too many other boats. Because for some reason, the boats themselves actually do cause a lot of lag. So if you get like three or four in one area, there will be a little bit of glitching on it. There's no regardless of the server. So always be careful with that. All right, I think that's got most of everything painted. We're going to go ahead and hit these railings. No, no, there is a few pieces that I haven't got painted yet. A little bit fast on that one. Oops. I don't outrun it here. All right, let's get all the railings. So we did all of our trim and rivets in br mud. Painted the boat itself in forest green. Now we're going to paint this top. Let's see. And we may just go ahead and do it in forest green after all. I'm really liking the way that that color combo is going coming together. So, see when we change color, it puts your gun up. So when it comes back out, you have to reset it. Okay, 
Now, you know, from the walls, it was one in four was the main part. But now, on the ceiling, one in four is something completely different. So, let's see here. Here we go. Nope, I just didn't have one turned on. There we go. Hmm. That actually looks good. I like that. We'll go ahead and do this. Now, I am just holding the trigger down. That Most people might not do that depending on how much you paint you make or how easy it is. You may have to go through and just tap on each individual one just to save paint. I tend to go just a little ballistic in my paint. Okay, there we go. Now, like I said, it's your boat. You can paint it however you want. I just wanted a kind of a, a little military type look to it. We'll go ahead and pick our mud back up, and we'll do all the rivets. I know it's hard to see, but let me see. There we go. Get them off. Oops, it's right here. the rivets up top. There we go. So we got all of that taken care of. So now the outside of our boat's pretty good, pretty well painted. Maybe one or two pieces that I have to go back like and clean up a little bit like this one piece right here. That's easy to do. Not hard. Now if you want to make it easier of course you can always equip two guns and put whatever color or whatever how many colors you're going to be doing and just switch between two. Just don't forget to change those active regions. here would switch then of course make sure you turn off the ones you don't want vice versa on the turning on and then just go around to you get make sure you've got every single piece of it painted matched up now I'm gonna go ahead and hit this ladder but I'm gonna paint the, the whole thing brown or mud color just because I want it to be Kind of blend in but a metal ladder it's only going to paint so much of it keep that in mind go over here to the other side make sure we paint the other one you can't have one one color one the other unless that's what you're going for i have seen stranger things i've seen painted rainbow colors and if that's what you want more power to you now we're going to go ahead and hit that region 4 so it gets in class. Alright, so that's got the whole outside of the boat. That's pretty much it. The rest of it's going to be, we won't be able to decorate more until we finish up stuff on the inside. And of course our inside is bright as day. So now we, just, we need to go ahead and finish up painting in here. You see our walls are already painted. Well, some of them. Oops, turned off the wrong region. There we 
go. Now, luckily, this is not one of the more complicated ship builds I've done where you've got a mesh stuff and clip stuff and trying to get it painted when there's three of them in the same spot. go. Right now we're going to go ahead and turn off that one and that one. That'd be one and four. We can go ahead and get our rivets painted. I can already tell you this one right here I'm not going to have to worry about painting because we're fixing to pick it up. And if you remember, there's an entire floor below us that we don't have a way to get into from inside the boat. So that wouldn't make much sense. So we're going to have to add in a hatch frame and ladder. I just wanted to get all that painted first. Alright, so let's go ahead and pick that one up. Alright, now the fun joy of putting in our hatch frame. Now we want the hatch frame to open towards the wall. Right, and right now, it doesn't know where it wants to go. Now, I would suggest trying to put this in from the bottom. Because you want this bar right here to be against this wall. That's, that's your pivot point for your hatch frame. So wherever that is, your hatch is going to pivot from here towards that way. So we want this against that wall. Otherwise, you're going to have a fun time getting in and out. What we're going to do is we're going to go down. We're going to see if we can get it to fit like that right there. And hopefully I pick up the right one. Oh. Go ahead and pick them both up. Like that right there. So whenever we put our hatch frame, our door in, it's going to open the way we want. Otherwise, you're going to spend the whole time come with it opening the wrong way or opening towards you. That's not what you want. There we go. Now, whenever you... The whole reason we did it that way is your ladder always attaches on the opposite side of this bar. So by doing it that way, whenever we climb the ladder, the wall is behind us and we're coming up into the boat like we should. That's what we want. Now we're going to go ahead and pop. Oh, that is not right. Had, it, had everything selected wrong. Really? Get off of the ladder. Get down. Good. Thank you. Set up some. Um, five and six. Hit that. Like that. Hit that. There we go. Now we're back in order. Back in business. All right. Then we put our hatch ring door in. Find it. There we go. Now the latch is where it's supposed to be. It'll open the way we want it. Of course, depending on whether you're on top or bottom, it picks which way it opens. If you're on top, it'll open up into the wall if you want it to. There we go. All done. Right, now we're going to go ahead and finish upstairs before we start working down here. Because we got a few more walls and stuff to put in up here because right now it's kind of bare. And we don't want bare. Oh, no bare. So, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to pop a wall in here. 
There we go, on the inside. And we're going to pop one here on the inside. And we're going to use a single door here. And we're going to stand up because I didn't realize I was sitting down. And this is where we're actually going to put our bed at. And don't worry if you put a wall in accidentally like I just did. Just walk around and pick it up. Alright, then we're going to pop an angle in right there. Definitely not that one. That is the wrong one. <laughs> we want the other one. There we go. Game catch up with me. There we go. And I'll come back later and do the rivets. We're going to go ahead and pop us a bed in here. Now we want the a bunk bed. The bunk, bunk bed counts as two beds in one spot. But also, if you ever have that bed, the glitch, you can uh, where you can't jump or access anything, you can just travel right back to your own bed, and that'll take care of it. There we go, and you can turn it and put it up against that wall if you want to. Just depends on how you want it to look, and there's room in here for storage. But it's like a large storage box, I think, right here, and small storage boxes. All right now, we're going to get into start sectioning this off. A wall there, and a wall there. All here. There we go. Here. That's good. Now, if you you don't have to do uh, all the doors and stuff inside of your boat if you don't want to. I just do it mainly for looks because it gives it that nautical look. No, everything's got doors and everything. But if you don't want, if you're not worried about aesthetics, you don't even have to put these walls in that I put in. You can leave this whole area open. Just set it up however you want to set it up. That is completely up to you. Like for me, I will do, uh, put storage boxes here and storage boxes here. That'll be all my storage. And then I can put my cryo fridges right here. And then, of course, I will put in, I always put this up here just because it's close to storage. Now remember your fabricator, hem bench, all of that, all of that storage. So utilize it. Don't don't think, oh I gotta keep my fabby cleaned out. No, just pack it full of stuff. Anything that you would need to craft in the fabby, store it there. Right like that right there. I mean, if you wanted to get all fancy, you could even 
You can even section the whole thing off. It just depends on how much room you think you're going to need. You do it like that and just have some, like, like one, two, three, four, five cryo fridges in here. That's plenty for a boat. Because you're probably going to have a main base somewhere else. And this is just a supply runner. So you'd only take what you need with you. Or if you, like I said, if you wanted to park it out somewhere, but there is a really awesome place. I mean, I'm, I'm building bottom left-hand corner. Now, if you go to bottom right-hand corner, there's a coral reef. A huge coral reef, a bunch of them down there. And you can park the boat on top of that coral reef and nothing can get to you. So you technically have a, almost a permanent mobile spot, I guess you'd say. Probably. Maybe. Bottom. Bottom right. Okay. So let's go ahead and start getting some of our storage. And, well, actually, let's go ahead and paint. Now, and if you find yourself running low on uh, structure limit or hitting structure limit, you can always leave these walls, these walls and stuff out. We're way from the Okay, now, but the, this right here, one of the most dangerous things to an arc survivor is fire. Fire hurt, fire bad. And one of the mo biggest things that an arc survivor does is build a cooking pot or a campfire and then walk right through the middle of it. So, <laughs> we're going to alleviate that. Lord knows I have walked through my own fires more time than I care to me. So we're going to grab the cook pot. Now, I would love it if we could do an industrial cooker on a boat. <laughs> a legitimate way. But, um, there is a way you can get stuff like that on here. But, because I know how to put industrial forges on boats, industrial cookers, all that. But uh, this is a legitimate build without any major glitches. All right, so we're going to get our cooking pot. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop that thing in. We're going to try to, what you want to do is try and get two of the three rocks lined up right there. If you can do it in the middle, that works even better. Right? And then you pop a window in. You can still access your cooking pot. But you can't walk into it. So that helps a lot. And it just looks cleaner. Put your wall in. There we go. There you go. Short, simple, to the point. We can put bam. And if you wanted to get, uh, you might think, hey, I can throw a window on there. And you can. You just have to be careful. You can actually go here. Pop in a window. There. And then you can look right here and close it. So now your wooden campfire 
on your military boat is hidden. So it's not something you can actually see. But that helps out a lot. And that's just where I always put it. You can even, you can move it up here. Whatever. Along that wall you want to do. Right? And then in here we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our cryo fridges. I have any. Don't let me grab some. Right, and you can put as many of these as you want on your boat. If you're if you're using your boat just to go out and snag water tames, then you're gonna need some a uh, storage space. Whatever whatever you need. I don't generally mess with tames all that much. I mean I have like one team that I keep all the time. That's my alpha fire wyvern. But other than that, do this right here. Bam, bam. I mean, that's what? Seven? Seven of them? Technically, you could put another. You can move this one over and put another. You could have eight cryo fridges on your boat. But remember... The more things you have on your boat, that's the more fuel you've got to make. Blah, 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 blah. More, because the more you have, the more electricity you use, the more fuel you got to make, the more resources you're going to burn. But electricity is a 58 server, so getting resources is not hard. No, 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 no. All right, and we'll go ahead and paint that while we're here. Now I wish you could put vaults on a boat, because that's a bit that would be awesome storage. But you also got to think about it; they're heavy as everything. And large storage boxes. All right, we'll just grab a stack of those. We're gonna pop those in. Right now, I'm going to use, just use the old customary lineup across the bar. Get it lined up, that line in your floor. Right about there. There we go. All right, and then you just walk till you see the back of it disappear. Let me go. Oh. Put this one up against this wall. Right over. I'm going to match them up. Then I'm going to go over and I'm going to put this one up against this wall. And then match them up. And there we go. Nice little storage. Right and easy peasy. Now you can go back and you can put some against this wall. You can put some against this wall if you wanted to. You could even put another wall up. Have a little bit of walk space in between. It depends on how much room, whether you want it wide open or enclosed or however you want to do it. Alright, now let's go uh, downstairs. Oh, wait. There is one thing I need to put here. Oh. Now you can mark your map spot. You can just walk up to it with a paintbrush and add a dot wherever your bases are located or you can even, I've seen people take and have an entire legend like blue was resources, green was artifacts, uh, red was bases, you know, and have everything marked so at quick glance you don't have to go to Google or Wikipedia or whatever. You, you've got everything marked on your map. You can just glance at it and go, okay, I'm I'm here. I need to go there. Blah, blah, blah. Because we are currently right there at that island. See that? Those three little islands. One of them looks like a, a squirrel. And then the two, three humps. We're right there. 
and then my main base is located right there. So yeah. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now there's a lot more, like I said, you can add to it, do whatever you want. I always decorate them different every time. It's never the same. But now we're going to go downstairs to the bowels of the ship. All those turrets just waiting to shoot something. All right, and we're going to get started here. We're going to put in our generator. Right, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw us down a ladder. And before I even get it, I'm going to go ahead and grab my genie. My generator's name is Genie. That makes perfect sense. Alright, I'm going to pop that down here on my bar. Climb up. And then I'm going to pick up. Alright, there we go. Okay, so... I know that I, this is going to be behind a closed door, so I just want to move back. I'll get just past the line of that foundation and pop it right behind the rivets. That way, whenever I shut the door, it'll just barely cover it up. All right, now we got to run electrical cables. But before we do that, uh, let's go ahead and just paint everything green. And I always use the, the whole of this ship for the crafting area, the main crafting area. I keep the uh, cooking fire upstairs just because that makes more sense. Uh, whenever I do my pirate ship, uh, build. I actually have a dedicated galley just for the uh, cooking pot and all that stuff. These are going to be the fun ones. I have to paint them from below the ship. Just because they're sticking in that front where those um, where the pontoons are. And a lot of them don't want to paint correct. You can't get them from the top. Just swim below, paint them, and come back up. So I'll get them later. Yes, close. Close. Get everything greenified. Going green. Not really. Okay, so we've already got our fabby put in. Because that was put in when we started building. So that way that's taken care of. Give me just a second here. Let's check something. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Got it checked. Do -do 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 -do. I hope everybody's enjoying the stream so far. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, hey, be more than happy to drop them in chat, and I'll answer them if I can. All right, so now that we got our Jenny in place. We got everything painted. Now we're going to run our electrical cables. Then once we get electrical cables, then we can start uh, putting down our chem bench and stuff like that. Go ahead. We're going to grab some straight ones and whoops, some junctions and some well intersections and junctions. 
the first thing we want to do is we want to see how far out this goes. Okay, so that right there is not going to work for us. What we're going to do is we're going to go here. And the reason for that is that puts our cable right up under the edge. Like that right there. And that's what we're wanting. Now one thing I noticed real quick though. Is that's not straight. We're going to pick all of that up. That means our generator is not straight. Go back. Dun, dun, dun. So, pick up our genie. Take a look here. So we we put the ladder down, but evidently we threw us off just a little bit when we picked it up, and that was probably where I was holding right to pick up. That's what messed it up. So we'll go. I wasn't thinking when I done that. So we're going to destroy it. Instead of picking it up. Is that right there? Come on, climb up. Try that again. Up. A little bit of lag here. Uh. All right, this is probably the point where I get kicked. Yeah. This would be where the server is saving and it kicked me out of the game. So give me just a second here. This will be a perfect time to take a small break and I'm going to relog real quick. So I will be right back. back. Sorry about that. Get logged in here. Dun, 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 dun. Ragnarok and Patricia. There it is. 
No password needed. Like I said, they have a ton of servers. <clears throat> they have great admins, moderators on Discord, and we do cleanings every weekend. We go out and find bases that either have no flags or the incorrect color of flags, which you are given a small grace period, but if they don't have the right colors, then we just wipe the whole base. So that part of the community rules, every server has a community server that you can go and read all the rules anytime you want to, and they're posted on their Discord. They also have a nice admin shop, things like that. It's a really good cluster to play on for PvE. <laughs> now hopefully I'm not drowning in the water. I hope everybody's enjoying the stream. Everything's going good. Getting logged back in here. Remember, when you join a tribe, all of your structures and dinos become owned by the tribe. Unless they have it set to where it doesn't happen that way. Alright, now we're back in. All right, give me just a second here. Do -do 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 -do. Gotta do some nefarious activities. Okay, there we go. I got that taken care of. <laughs> All right, so let's try putting that back down. There we go. I wasn't sure where I was. Are you caught up yet? Still waiting on to get caught up. There we go. All right, we're going to demolish this time. I'm not even budget estimate. <clears throat> Getting get caught up here. There we go. Right, now that should have our electricity lined up where we want it to be. Should be even. 
There we go. Hmm. I think it's still off. Yeah, it's still so off. Why is that off this time? We'll figure it out. We'll get it in there right. Hmm. That right there is exactly what There we go. Okay, so that should be lined up perfectly. Could be. Doesn't mean that it is. As you can see, even when you line it up, it still wants to put it off just a little bit. just have to do a little bit of rearranging here but I can't have it because by the time we run these power lines if they're not exactly where they straight you'll see it from one end to the other and then you've got a mess on your hand so if we line up on that line that pop that genie out see that shows that it's straight Just a hair out. This is also why I run very low sensitivity so that I can do tap taps without it going haywire. Now we want to take, I want to look at that line. You should. According to the rivets, it's off just a little bit. The nudge. There we go. All right, so that right there should be it. So sometimes even using the ladder and stuff, you still get off just a touch. Now that looks better. How does it look over here? Good, good. Now that looks a lot better. Now we're going to take on our straight line. That one should. Still not 100%, but I'm okay. As long as that cable is laid right up against that metal. And the whole reason for doing that is so that your wiring's hidden. I mean, if 
you can if you want it you know showing out in the middle of everywhere that's fine i like it to be, kind of be hidden against walls if possible if possible right now we're going to start putting in <clears throat> start putting in our junk Meant to do, but we'll be cake. I have to double one right here. We don't want to try and double up on them if you can help it because it counts against your all, all, all over. And we also know that there is a junction box hidden right in here. There we go. All right, that's got that pretty well took care of. back that way but those are primarily for looks but they will also serve a purpose because our kin bench is going to be put right here in front of this there we go it looks like that's getting power too even though we know that fabricators don't have to have power it just adds a little bit to it Let's go ahead and pick up our Kim bench. All right, and then we're going to use that same lineup technique. Now we just want to try and center this. Then we're going to pull forward until comes out of the fabric area. You can see through it. it. You're used to looking through meshes and you can kind of tell where it touches it where it doesn't. But you know what? I think I'm going to put this on the back side. I can get it in. Oh, I can't get it in. Yep, there we go. That. Forward. Just right there. Just using the base of the fabricator to kind of guesstimate. I didn't think it was going to go in there. But it was worth a try. Because we're getting too far out this way. So what we can do then. Is. I'm going to move the fabricator. Back. I know that my junction boxes are even. And kind of center it back as far as I can. Right spot looking down.
There we go. What it was is I was looking too far up. And so even though I was putting it in the right place, it couldn't find the snap point. Down there. Be able to bring this out this way. There we go. Now I can access the Kim bench and I can access the fabricator. And the reason I've done that is because Kim bench is, you can see how tall it is. It's a wall and a half, so it's a fabricator. Well, fabrication, not really good. It's a little bit over a while, but you know what I mean. Okay. Now then, let's go ahead and get us some fuel dropped off in this bad boy. Come on. If you're placing those, the game's like, I don't know where you are. This is the kind of glitch I was talking about. If you ever had this, then that's what the beds are for. One of those moments when you can fast travel and it'll fix yourself. Because the game's technically desynced you. And it doesn't know where you're at. I am decent. Okay, well, I think I'm going to call it a night right there. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the stream. I hope everything was going good. Of course, the rest of it would be just, you know, putting fuel in your generator. Of course, running one wire upstairs to power anything that's up there. And if you're, if you're really easy with the way of running it you can run it here and it'll actually you can run it off of one of these junction boxes and it would show up like right inside the wall on the top floor and you don't have to run like one on each side or something you can run power along the wall or you could run it like right here up or even put wire up the top with it and put a junction box and then run flexi cable from that junction box down to one down here. That way the wiring stays all nice and hidden. Yeah, it's not gonna let it's not gonna let us in. I'm not locking out lock back in again. So I hope everybody enjoyed the stream. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please keep them respectful and polite, but definitely ask me anything. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Don't forget to check out my channel on White Hair Investigations on YouTube. Of course, it's just look up my name, Ana Luruko, A I N U R A U C O, and you can find that. You can also find me on Twitter if you have questions, concerns, or comments. And as always, have a great night, everyone, and have fun going down the rabbit hole. Bye bye.